absolutely. Um, my name is Jill Mailing, and I am a school implementation manager for EverFi. Um, we are an organization based out of Washington, D.C., but with um, presence kind of all over the United States and Canada. Um, and so I'm super excited to share a little bit of information about what we do, specifically in the prevention education space in um, K-12. Um, so if I can share my screen here. Yep. And let me know that you can see it. That looks good. Perfect. Okay. And we've got till 1230. Is that right? Yeah, 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 until 1230. Okay, perfect. If you need to cut me off sooner, um, feel free. But uh, yeah, so I am, my name's Jill. I work for EverFi. Um, I've been a school manager, schools manager for them for about uh, almost three years now. Um, I'm here in Ann Arbor as well. So I'm one of two schools managers for the state of Michigan. Um, my colleague Ryan serves kind of Detroit and the Thumb, um, and I serve kind of uh, Ann Arbor and West um, in the state. Um, but we joke that we live like eight minutes away from each other and we haven't seen each other in a year. Hopefully that's soon to change. Um, but anyway, we support um, K-12 educators who use our um, life skills, whole child resources um, across the state. Um, so EverFi, well, real quick, uh, here's what I have for us today. A little introduction and overview of what EverFi does. Um, some information on our instructional resources. I'll do a quick demo of the platform for anyone who wants to see it. Um, some ideas on opportunities for how we might be able to collaborate, um, and then some time for Q&A. Um, so here's my contact information. I'll throw it up again at the end. Um, but again, my role is school implementation manager. So I work directly with schools who use our, um, our online learning programs. So we have about 3 million users um, across the country. Um, we work on a sponsorship model, so we partner with different community organizations um, and corporate partners to bring our resources to schools and community orgs totally for free. Um, so everything on our platform is available to teachers and educators um, at no cost. Uh, and so what we do is real world learning. Um, I'm going to focus specifically on prevention education um, for kind of this presentation, but I like to mention that we cover kind of the full um, eight dimensions of wellness. Um, and so we're continually building out new resources uh, that fit into each of these verticals. We actually started with financial literacy. That was how we were founded about 10 years ago. Um, but we quickly got feedback from the teachers who we were partnering with that they needed additional resources and kind of some of these other verticals. And so we built it out to become like a full service uh, whole child education platform. Um, I don't feel like I need to do a deep dive into this because you guys are well versed in these topics, uh, but this is just again a summary of the kind of topics we cover. Um, and so what it looks like in terms of implementation um, is that most often it's K-12 educators who are coming directly to our platform, signing up for an account, and then deploying lessons with students. Um, and these cover a wide range of topics that I'll go into in a little bit, um, but it's important to know that everything on the platform is online, so it's delivered digitally. We do have some supplemental discussion guides and things like that that can happen offline, but all of the primary content is online, which was helpful before the coronavirus pandemic, but has certainly been even more helpful the last year and a half um, for helping teachers kind of jump between these different learning modes of in-person, remote, hybrid, et cetera. Um, the lessons generate uh, data for teachers. So there's a pre-quiz and a post-quiz on every lesson that students take. Um, and there's also surveys that we um, administer to students who are using the program. So we get a lot of data on um, student perspectives on these topics as well. Um, and then teachers also receive local support from yours truly. And as I mentioned, um, our programs are completely free to schools. Um, we do this through our sponsorship model. Um, so we work with, again, different organizations, some local to Michigan, some national, um, some kind of regionally based um, who cover the cost of our courses. Um, our prescription drug safety course, which I'm gonna highlight today is a uh, part provided in the state of Michigan by the Rite Aid Foundation, uh, Farmers Insurance, and Kroger. Um, and then many of our other resources are covered by uh, local banks, um, local sports teams. Um, the United Way of Southeast Michigan is one of our big partners. Um, and they cover the cost of both using the courses online as well as professional development training, ongoing support, and some special events and scholarship opportunities as well. 
Um, this is just a quick glance at like what we kind of did last year um, in the state of Michigan. Um, so we worked with about 600 schools and about 60,000 students um, who use at least one or more of our resources on our platform. So that's kind of an overview of what we do. We're online learning for whole child education, um, but why I'm here today is obviously to focus really specifically on our um, prevention education resources. So this is an overview of all of the courses we offer. And I apologize, I haven't been monitoring the chat. I don't see anything there, but um, I'm very, <laughs> I tend to like skip over it. So if you have questions, feel free to just unmute and interrupt me. Um, or uh, Matt, if you see something in the chat, feel free to, to highlight it for me. Um, but these are all of the resources available on our platform. Um, so if you see something that's of interest to you, if you're a parent or know an educator um, in your circle, um, you're definitely welcome and encouraged to kind of recommend that they check something out. Um, anything with a red star is new to our platform this year, 2020-2021 uh, school year. Um, so we're constantly building out our library based on the demand that we hear from teachers about what they need and what they want to see covered. Um, so we were super excited to roll out about, I think, seven new courses this year, plus we updated a couple of our older ones. Um, so we're actually really excited. We're going to be revamping our prescription drug safety course this year, uh, this summer, um, in time for the fall to make it even more kind of relevant and engaging for students. Um, so as I said, everything is delivered through online self-paced modules. Uh, most of the courses are about an hour of total content. So they're really easy for teachers or community organizations to deploy um, in kind of a brief setting. Like it's not meant to be a super deep dive comprehensive overview. Um, it's really great for kind of fitting in with their existing curriculum. Most high school teachers are using the Michigan model, model for health curriculum. Um, but they find that these short turnkey activities fit in really well um, with what they're already doing. Um, again, especially when they've been jumping back and forth between these different learning modes to have something that's consistently online and easy to deliver um, has been, you know, really helpful as what we've heard from teachers this year. <clears throat> um, and then, as I said, there's also um, offline materials to support the online content. <laughs> Um, okay, so diving a little bit deeper into the specific resources, which was really what I wanted to bring to you all today. Um, I know that not all of you or not many of you necessarily are working primarily with um, K-12 students or, or K-12 schools, but perhaps some of you might be. Um, and the great thing about these resources is because they're already sponsored and paid for, um, there's really a lot of flexibility with how they're implemented. Um, so if it's something that you feel like there might be a space for wherever you're kind of working within the community, um, please get in touch with me after today and I'm happy to explore what that could look like. Um, we're really just trying to get these resources um, into the hands of more kids and more people who would benefit from the information. Um, so our prescription drug safety course is one hour. Um, it's about uh, six lessons, about 10 minutes each. Um, walk students through um, six different lessons that cover uh, definitions of opioids, stimulants, and depressants, um, the science of addiction in the brain, um, what misuse uh, refusal skills look like. So there's actually an interactive activity where a student is approached by a peer, um, who wants to uh, have their prescription drugs for some reason or another, and the student has to choose how they respond, and the situation kind of unfolds from there, and they're able to see the different um, consequences of their actions based on how they respond. It also talks about how to support uh, a loved one or a friend if you believe that they are misusing prescription drugs. Um, so it's an evidence-based public health approach um, to learning about prescription drug safety um, and includes these kind of scenario-based situations that students have to respond to. Um, so I'll do a demo in a little bit, but just this is kind of to give you a visual of what the program looks like uh, when students first log in. And all of our resources are kind of set up like this, such that they're broken into these bite-sized modules. So it's really easy for students to log in, do a lesson at a time or a couple lessons at a time, and then log out um, and pick up where they left off. Uh, next time. <clears throat> um, so these are the six lessons that it's broken down into. Here's an example of what a particular uh, page in the program would look like. 
So you can see um, they're asked to identify the different elements of the prescription um, and it you know, gives them more information on each component as they're going through. All right, so again, I'll highlight that one when I sign in and do a demo for us, but I wanna cover our other uh, resources within the preve prevention education vertical um, so that you can see a little bit of each one. Another one that we offer is alcohol EDU for high school. So very similar in its approach to prescription drug safety, but of course is covering the topic of alcohol safety. Um, it's five lessons, uh, an introduction, uh, know your influences, uh, brain in the body, again, covering kind of the science of how, how alcohol influences your brain and your body functioning. Um, smart decisions, that includes how to talk to parents about alcohol, and then a conclusion. Um, so this one includes goal setting tools and a student portfolio. Um, and this is actually true of every course that pre and post behavioral survey data um, is assessed with any student over the age of 13 who's taking a course on our platform. Um, Vaping Know the Truth just was released this November, and it's already had an explosive following on our platform um, from our health teachers who were already using prescription drug safety, alcohol EDU, or the next course I'll show, Mental Wellness Basics. We had overwhelming feedback that we needed a course on vaping. We had built like a supplemental vaping discussion piece for our other health courses um, that teachers were using, but they said, you know, we need we need a course specifically on vaping. And so this course was huge already this year. We had, I think, hundreds of teachers using it within the state of Michigan, um, which was really exciting. Excuse me. Um, so this one is also pretty short and sweet, under an hour, um, covers the dangers of vaping. Um, there's a really great module on um, kind of the history of the tobacco industry and all of the different ways that they have preyed upon different types of consumers and how, you know, young people are really um, part of an experiment right now. Like we don't have a ton of data on um, the dangers of, of vaping. We kind of know some things, but, um, you know, they, they've really kind of chosen to target young people and, and young people aren't really necessarily aware of um, how their bodies are being used as part of this, this brand new substance, this experiment. So I think that's been really cool for resonating with students um, who are vaping already or at risk for starting vaping um, to kind of help them understand that, that influence. And again, this one also covers refusal skills. Um, if you're approached by a peer, um, self-care and resources to quit, as well as how to support a friend um, in that situation. Oh, excuse me. I don't know why I'm so dry today. Okay, Mental Wellness Basics um, is actually one of my favorite courses on our platform. Um, I regret that I wasn't able to join earlier. I would have loved to hear about the uh, more of the presentation before mine, and perhaps there would be some connection there. Um, but Mental Wellness Basics has been on our platform, I think, for three years now. Um, and it's another really popular one across the state. Um, it's another short and sweet one for 10 to 15 minute lessons, so less than an hour, but really takes a great approach to mental health from a proactive standpoint and really helping destigmatize this with middle and high school populations. Um, so seeing and really framing mental health as something that everybody can work on, you know, it's like your physical health, um, it's something that everyone can try and improve through mindfulness and stress management and that kind of thing. Um, not necessarily just as something that you only address if you have a mental health issue. Um, so it walks students through the different components that kind of make up mental health, um, strategies to help you cope with challenges, um, whether they're specifically school related challenges or outside of school interpersonal um, how to seek treatment for yourself or for a friend if you think someone does have a mental health issue and how do you identify that um, and it does talk a little bit about like symptoms and causes of common that peer to peer you're telling a life experience. Um, so those are our four main prevention education courses, um, again, used pretty widely across the state. Um, what I'll do now is I'll pause in case there's any questions about the courses themselves. 
um, but then I'll also um, kind of give you an interactive look at what it, what it looks like. Oops. All right, no questions. I will keep on going then. All right, so this is what the EverFi student dashboard looks like. I'll also be able to show you what the educator dashboard looks like in a second, um, but it's supposed to be too super turnkey and easy for students to navigate. And then I'm going to click into the course and here it's going to pick up right where I left off. Um, so as I said, every uh, lesson has a pre quiz and a post quiz and teachers have access to this data. So it's going to assess what students know before they complete the module and then again afterwards. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and click through here. I'm not paying any attention to the questions, <laughs> lest first, anyone thinks I don't know. Um, so then it walks through um, the first lesson. So we're starting with the basics. What are prescription drugs? We're gonna start with some definitions. There is audio, I'm not gonna play it um, just because I don't know if it will actually play through for you guys, um, but know that there is audio matching all of the text on screen. Question, can this platform be used for recovery credits? Yes and no. So the courses themselves do not directly translate to, um, to credits for recovery. Now, if a teacher who is kind of providing um, that, edu that education wants to use these as part of their programs, yes. So the answer is essentially no. Um, yeah, we do get that question a lot. I wish, I wish the answer was yes. <laughs> In this course, we'll focus. So then we're going to start walking through the types of prescription drugs. These three. And this is where it starts to become interactive. So students have to click through. And learn about each of these different elements. And then they'll be able to continue on to the next page. So I'm obviously going through a little bit quick. Guys, the gist of what stuff it looks like. So legal risks and consequences, et cetera, et cetera. So um, students continue to work through at their own pace um, until they complete uh, each of the lessons. And then their score on the lessons um, determines whether or not they become certified. Um, so a teacher, excuse me, a student who completes the lessons with a 70 or higher, um, that's our consideration for passing, um, can earn a certificate in prescription drug safety that, that they can then use for, um, you know, their resume, um, you know, if they're applying for a job that potentially has, you know, relevance, um, this is true for any of the courses on our platform. Um, so if students complete multiple courses, they can earn multiple certificates, um, something they can print and just have kind of as part of their high school portfolio. And I say high school, we do also have some middle schools who use this, but it's primarily implemented at the high school level. All right, and then I'll give a quick preview of the educator dashboard. Can remember my password. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so teachers who are working with students um, can have multiple courses on their dashboard, assign multiple courses to different sections. But really, the key piece I like to highlight is that they have this really rich, robust data um, from students participation in the courses. So the scores on the individual lessons that they can then use to follow up with students um, who aren't necessarily scoring well, um, they can print those certificates from their dashboard. Um, and 
they can also see if students haven't made progress. Um, so it, it's not building here for me because I don't have any students in my um, account, but it'll build just like a grade book with students' names down one axis and their score, or their, the different lessons um, across the other axis, and then it'll fill with their scores. Um, so that is what the student and educator platforms look like. Um, if I jump back here. So opportunities to collaborate. Um, again, I know that not necessarily all of you are working directly with K-12 folks, but perhaps you know a K-12 educator, whether it's someone at the high school level or the elementary or middle school level um, who might be interested in using one of our programs. Um, we do a ton of outreach. Um, that's a big part of my role. Um, via email. Um, in pre-COVID times, I would also kind of do drop-bys to schools or um, district trainings in person, things like that. Um, but if you know somebody um, at the admin level or at the educator level who you think might be interested in implementing these programs, um, again, they're available completely for free. They are sponsored. They are paid for for the entire state. Um, so it's really just a question of getting them um, in front of the right people. Understandably, I'm sure this will come to a surprise, come at to no one as a surprise, um, especially if you are a former teacher or are married to or have a teacher in your family, but um, the overwhelm this year is, is truly unreal for teachers. Um, and they don't have time to preview new material. So even when we're offering these things as evidence-based public health approach, totally no cost, um, a lot of times they just, they don't have the time to vet it and see if it's the right fit. So that is honestly the biggest obstacle um, to getting these resources into the hands of folks who otherwise would likely use them. Uh, most of the teachers who do check out our platform end up sticking around and end up using the students for multiple years um, and end up referring other teachers as well. So it's really just our biggest barrier is, is getting into the hands of teachers who, um, may may very well want to use our resources. Um, so if you can help us with that, that's always welcome. Um, if you'd like to set up your own account on the platform in order to demo or share, et cetera, um, please get in touch with me. I'd be happy to set one up for you. Um, I can also send you the information to self-register um, after we are done today. Um, you can also follow us on social media. I included our EverFi K-12 um, handle here. You can also follow me. Um, I'm Jill underscore EdTech. Um, and I'm always trying to kind of connect with more folks locally around these issues. Um, similarly, if you don't necessarily know somebody in K-12, um, but maybe there's a community organization that you feel like would benefit from deploying these programs from a prevention standpoint, um, we definitely would be happy to talk about that. Um, and then our annual impact report comes out every summer. That includes um, usage data, knowledge gains, um, kind of summary of the survey data too, like how students' attitudes have changed on prescription drug safety or mental health as a result of taking our courses. Um, so if that's something you're interested in receiving, um, definitely let me know and I would be happy to send it to you um, this summer when it comes out. But that's pretty much all I've got. I appreciate you um, having me on here to talk a little bit about this, and I'm happy to take any other questions before I turn it back over to you. Jill, just a quick question on um, the content. So is it just uh, focused specifically at prescription drugs, or does it include illicit substances as well? So the prescription drug safety course um, only covers uh, prescription drugs that does okay. not cover um, illicit substances. We don't have a course that really addresses that, although I would say each of them maybe kind of touch on it briefly mm -hmm. um, and kind of cover it in the refusal skills. Um, you know, they talk about kind of the legal consequences of using prescription drugs that are not prescribed to you. Um, and I believe in that section, they also, you know, suggest that things that you don't even necessarily procure from somebody, um, you know, that has a prescription, that that would also be a concern as well. Um, but yeah. Um, there's a question from the chat here. Is there any harm reduction advice in the educational curriculum there? Not to my recollection. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Um, it's a pretty, it's a, it's possible that maybe in the new vaping course, um, you know, with the advice to quit, there's maybe a more kind of stepwise approach, but, um, I don't think there is in prescription drug safety. Yeah. 
All right. Did we have any other questions? Awesome. Again, um, like with the other presentations, if you um, leave here today and didn't copy down um, any contact information or stuff like that, reach out to me and I'd be happy to connect you to Jill or any of the other presenters. Um, but with that, we are right at time. So thank you everybody for joining us and we will see everybody next month. Thank you. Thank you.